Hi everyone, I'm Linda Sheldon Bell and this is Grief Diaries Live. Do you believe in the afterlife? Do you believe that our loved ones in heaven can give us signs? I am here with Christine Dominiak, an after death expert, uh, to talk about the signs from our loved ones and to answer your questions. Chris is uh, the author of five books on the subject. She is regarded as a, an expert in, um, here's one of her books, just one of the five, uh, in after death communication. And she gives speeches all around the nation and uh, she's really a lovely lady. So welcome, Chris. Oh, thank you, Linda. Thank you so much for having me. This is my favorite. Oh, I'm excited for tonight. Um, I just have to show another one of your books. So um, <laughs> I have them all right here. Um, Can I you know, hey, Chris, my publisher you know, some of these what's books? that? I'd like people to know that you are my publisher for some of these books because <laughs> you believed in it so much and you were like, the most tremendous help ever. Thank you, so much. thank you. Thank you. Well, your books are fun to do. That's for sure. So, you know, I'm a big believer in after death communication. You know my story, um, but many people don't know what it is. They don't believe in it. They don't know what it is. So what is after death communication? Okay, so there's many different forms. It's usually a spontaneous, direct, um, sign or communication that you get from a loved one without the use of a medium, psychic, or devices or rituals other than prayer. And um, so it's kind of a, a spontaneous thing that happens and um, and it can come in all different forms. It can come okay. in form oh, did you want me to talk about the different forms? Or? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. They actually, I think that uh, I, I, you had said um, that they come in. There's like 20 different signs or contacts. Right. So in, ways that they can contact you. Yes. Um, in my book, After Death Communications: God's Gift of Love, which mm -hmm. is what they are to bring comfort to those who are mourning, um, I have identified at least 20 different types: dreams, visions, pets, audio and music. God, okay. God incidences, telepathic thoughts. Do you want me to go on or do you? Just... I do, because I think it's important for people to know the various ways that our loved ones uh, try to let us know that they are doing well. Um, and I think that's, you know, probably uh, the first thought everybody has when they lose a loved one is, are they OK? Right. And so because there are so many different ways that they try to let us know, um, I think it's important to, to list as many as you can. OK, so I will continue then. Uh, sense, the feel of their touch, the feeling of a presence around you, electrical manipulations through computers, phone calls, text messages, answering machines, caller IDs, photos, objects being moved. Um, unexplained gifts that someone brings you for no particular reason, but it's a significant date. Yeah. Wings, butterflies, dragonflies, birds, animals, insects, rainbows, shooting stars, uh, license plate messages, uh, specific numbers that may show up on your your um, your um, clock, mm. and candles are just. You know, that's like the basic ones, but they can vary a little bit. They can branch out into different types. Uh, and also pets um, also visit us from the afterlife, too. Um, I've had many different pets visit me in, in the form of maybe visions or dreams of them so I can get to spend some time with them again. Uh, I've had like, dogs. Um, I've had a cockatiel. I've had a chicken. Oh, that's right. Yeah, a chicken. <laughs> a chi <laughs> when I was a child. It was my first real pet. And uh, yeah, chicken that visited me in a dream recently. The, uh, pets can come. You might hear the sound that they used to make when they were around you before or their particular scent. Or, um, but yes, yeah, so pets do let us know that it's really a gift from God, as my book talks about. And it's they're in heaven and they're they're lovingly taken care of, but also God lets them be around us a lot, especially in the beginning when we're missing them so much because our pets are really like our little kids, aren't they? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're just so adorable, so sweet and so loving. And um, so our pets are around us when we're grieving, especially. And then when we 
kind of are not grieving as much. Uh, the, the visits will probably not be as often, but gee, I, I've had a dog uh, visit me like probably years, like 16 to 20 years after the pet had died. Wow. Yeah. And uh, our, our, uh, had a dog that died in 2000 and still just visited me just, just about a few weeks ago. Every now and then I get a little visit in a dream where I get to spend some time with her. So, Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah that's very comforting. So, you know, what do you say to naysayers that, um, you know, they, they debunk it or they think that it's, you know, the devil in disguise, um, you know, the people who don't believe in it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and they're, for those that don't believe in it, um, does their loved one work extra hard to try to say, hey, I'm okay? Um, what do you say to naysayers? That would be my first question. Well, the thing is, is I think these are really sacred events. And I think you should be careful about who you share them with because mm -hmm. you don't want someone to hurt you when you are uh, putting your pearls before them, as the Bible would say. And um, so I would be very careful. I mean, if you know someone who is a spiritual person and they may be open-minded to it, you could kind of feel them out. I used to do hand and foot reflexology work before I became a uh, grief recovery specialist. And it seemed like people who were grieving were always coming to me and I would say, well, have, and I would start it off in a very benign way. I would bring up the topic and I would say something like, well, have they visited you in any way? Have you gotten any afterlife contacts? As a matter of fact, I would say, sure. I, then I would say, for instance, in a dream, and then it would open the door where they would share their experiences. I, I can't, I, there's probably no one that ever said to me that they never had some kind of a sign but they didn't really think about it that much because um, if they really weren't versed in the, the topic and um, they may not have really understood how, how much of an afterlife visit they were uh, receiving. It wasn't just a dream, for instance. And, and then they would tell me about those, what I call God incidences, that things would happen that were, um, they felt like it might be their loved one, but they weren't really sure. So that's a way to kind of open up about it. Now, if you are talking to someone who has not experienced any type of a loss, they won't have a clue unless they had some extraordinary experience themselves that had nothing to do with a past loved one. But you'll find a lot of people, especially women, they seem to be more open to it than men, um, that you could, you know, if you know that they've lost someone and they're talking about they lost someone, you could just say, well, have you had any vivid dreams of them? And, um, you know, you could start the ball rolling that way and see how they, they uh, what they say when you say that. Okay. And though it is mostly women, but I've had a number of men confide in me after I brought up the topic. And I always say it in a very matter of fact way that it's a fact because I know it is a fact. And how I know it's a fact is because I had my dead in-laws visit me in my bedroom one night and they stayed for an hour. And this was back in 1998 before I was really knowledgeable about this topic. And that just opened my mind and the door to what is possible with God. So that's why wow. I'm a believer. When you had dead people showing up in your bedroom, it tends to make an impression. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. And so when that happened to you 20 years ago this year, um, I mean, I think now, you know, since then, it puts you on this whole journey where you become an expert and you talk all around the nation. But at the time that happened to you, did it scare you? You know, God prepared me for it um, in a way that I never th really thought about until it actually happened. But I have a I had a brother in law who was a priest until he died. And we used to when he would come uh, when he have some time off from his parish duties, he would come visit us. We were two hours away and we'd go out to lunch together. And one time we were walking through the mall and I saw James Van Prague's book, uh, Talking to Heaven. 
and I had seen him on TV by accident one night uh, on Larry King Live, and I thought, what? People communicate with the dead? What? There's such a thing? And so I was really interested because I had no idea. And so I said to my brother-in-law, uh, I'm going to buy this book. And he rolled his eyes at me because he was a Catholic priest. And, you know, that's kind of like taboo. But I bought the book anyway. And I read the book. And I was so amazed at what was possible. It was soon after I read that book that they showed up in my bedroom. So I really freaked out if I had not have had a clue about what it was. Yeah. And James von Prague, is he Catholic? He was at one time. I, I think okay. he's more metaphysical now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, John Edward, uh, he was Catholic. Is that right? Right. Okay. And so for those of you who don't know who he is, he's a well-known uh, psychic medium. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's had a TV show, uh, Crossing Over? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and I see that um, we've got a few comments here. Mary Lee Claflin. Claflin. Hi, Mary Lee. Oh, um, she hi. says, I love Christine's books. And yes, they're very uplifting. Oh. Uh, Belinda Power says, yes, it's not always fun. And she was referencing when we were talking about, um, you know, sometimes those signs and they can be scary, especially if you're not prepared for it. Um, so, you know, can you give any other incidences where people had an experience where it, it was frightening or, um, you know, might have caught them off guard and they didn't realize what it was at first? Yes, that, it happened to me the first night when my in-laws came. Um, because not all spirits that visit you are good spirits. So it, you need to know uh, how do you need to say protection prayers if you're having something pretty big happen to you but okay. the run of the mill uh, afterlife signs that you get um, they're usually very benign and they're comforting and um, you know nothing too wacko about it but uh, for me when my when my just before my in-laws showed up a, I woke up from a dream and I saw a man in the corner of the room near the ceiling and he was sitting at a desk very peacefully. He looked like a, an Italian priest because of the type okay. of hat that he was wearing. And, and you didn't recognize him? No, I couldn't see his face, but I, he just looked like a priest and he looked like he was reading a prayer book sitting at a desk, but he was sus suspended <laughs> near my ceiling. <laughs> I, thought, <"What?"> oh, odd. <laughs> I kept saying, what, what? what <laughs> going away I kept thinking well I'm probably still dreaming and he stayed there for quite a while and then he went up in like a puff of uh, you know he just dissipated and but that was very peaceful but then the next scene that happened in my room was very frightening it was uh, a, a bunch of spirits at the foot of my bed and they looked like skeleton faces and they were choking each other and I said oh what Oh, what is this? It can't be good. And I oh, put CBs under my pillow and I start praying like crazy. And as I was praying, the whole room, I think God sent in his warrior angels because nice. the whole room shifted to like a blue color, white uh, streaks of light twinkling through. I, I heard uh, a gust of wind and papers on my bureau move around. And wow. What, what, what it was, was really the warring angels coming in and like getting them out of there. And then I saw a woman who kind of reminded me of the Blessed Mother type of a look with a veil mm -hmm. over her head over my doorway, just for a brief second, as if to say, everything is peaceful and everything is, everything is safe. Oh. And then when, um, uh, after that happened, I felt very at peace. And I was, I saw there was still some spirits in the room. And I and I now I had like clarity of mind and I'm getting feedback. Linda, are you hearing the feedback here? On the on my our phone? broadcast? I hear myself repeat. Yeah, I hear an echo. You know, I don't hear it. Uh, so let's ask some of our viewers. Um, it, it, it probably is a delayed reaction from my speaking to come. Okay. So yeah, I'm not here on this end. Um, any of your viewers, if, are you hearing an echo in any of our uh, show here? Uh, go ahead and type it in. Let us know. Um, so we'll wait to see what they say. I don't hear it on my end. But, you know, so in, in talking about that, Chris, it brings up religion. 
And, and so, uh, you know, you saw a, a woman who looked like the Blessed Mother, um, you know, and an Italian priest. Um, what do religions say about after-death communication? Well, it's really interesting. In 1998, um, the Vatican, the chief theologian commentator for the Vatican newspaper came out with a few paragraphs saying that the church believed in the feasibility of communication with the dead. And, okay. and, um, and when you think about it, it really, and I have this article on my website, christinedominic.com. It's under the tab that says Vatican, if anyone would like to read it. And of course, it's easier if you're a Catholic because we have all our saints that we're known for that mm -hmm. make appearances right. and do healings and, you know, so like there's books of, of saints. So it's not a far-fetched thought to think that people can come back from the dead to for some good reason. Um, but there are different religions that feel that you sleep until the resurrection, the final resurrection. And so they think there's no way that you can come back and communicate with us. But in the Bible, um, Jesus was talking to Elijah and Moses on the um, uh, Mount Tabor and in front of his uh, three apostles. And um, so therefore, Jesus showed us that you could talk to the dead when you're on this side of the veil versus when they're on the other side of the veil. Right. And then of course, he, he um, gave gifts of the Holy Spirit to his um, apostles who were communicating with spirits and they were prophesizing and they were doing healings. So um, definitely it is a gift of the Holy Spirit and it is a gift from God. Anything that's comforting comes from God. And you don't have to be afraid if it's something comforting on the on the other side of that um if you're really very vulnerable if you're if say, say suppose someone in your family committed suicide and you're like grief stricken and and so worried um satan and i believe in satan will try to exploit your uh depression and your grief and your um your, your frightened state of mind and he will like visit you in your dreams do things like look like people have his bad guys visit you they'll look like your loved one the loved one might be suffering in oh, the or bleeding i've had those things happen to me but i had the presence of mine uh in the middle of the dream just to ask for jesus protection because I do that every night before I go to bed, because in your dream state, it's very easy for all types of spirits to okay. visit you. And you want the good guys to visit you. Right. You want, and, and God only sends them to bring us comfort. He would never send them to show, they're not bleeding when they're in heaven. And uh, you know, there is no pain and they fly by their thoughts and they're just um, surrounded by God's love all for right. being. So they want you to know that they're happy and they want you to be happy for them. So, uh, yeah, so, so things can happen. It's just not the good. It's also, you have to be careful depending right. on, on, on your situation. Well, I see some people, uh, there's, um, a, apparently some people are hearing a little bit of an echo with you only. And so, um, do you have a iPhone going on or a, a computer going on, on the Facebook page? Um, outside of the, um, oh, do you have the tab open on your iPad? No, let me just check. Hold on a second. Okay. Did you hear the echo when we first started? Oh, we lost you, Chris. Okay. Can you hear me? Oh, we lost you. Let's see if Chris comes back in here. All right. Let's see if Color to come back in. Thank goodness I can type 140 words a minute. <laughs> There you are. I'm back. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. 
That was a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> that was a planned commercial. Um, so, you know, um, I, should I share some of my own? Oh, after I, after, oh yes, your, yours are wonderful. Definitely. Well, you know, um, one of my most significant ones um, for viewers who don't know, uh, two years um, before our daughter died, I had a dream that she was a backseat passenger in a car that flew off the road and sunk in a lake. And the only thing she left behind was an open book floating on the water. And two years later, uh, that dream became reality when she died as a backseat passenger in a car coming home from a swim meet. And, you know, of course, I didn't start grief diaries until years later. Um, but I believe it was God's way of giving me a heads up and that, you know, she wanted me to know that, Mom, this is our path. This is what um, our purpose is. And I'm by your side, um, but this is how it has to be. And of course, uh, you know, since then, uh, quite a few dream visits and quite a few. Everyone in my family has experienced uh, <laughs> signs from our daughter, Allie. And uh, one of the uh, ones that I love to share is that our oldest son, who at the time was 20 years old, and he had this big, uh, you know, country uh, pickup truck. And uh, I tease him, it's a big redneck truck. And um, and he uh, got out of the truck. He drove us somewhere, he got out. He was out of the truck for all of two minutes and he climbed back in and he immediately noticed something under the floor mat that wasn't there just two minutes prior. He lifted up the floor mat and underneath was a blue rock and Allie, uh, before the accident, uh, she used to paint rocks blue and put them around in our gardens uh, for the fairies. <laughs> she loved fairy gardens. And so here, inexplicably, uh, underneath the floor mat of his truck uh, was one of her blue rocks. And, um, you know, that's people. This, there's this, this was what's not that? This was not a dream, right? This was no. This was not a dream, and you know, uh, people will try to debunk after death communication uh, for whatever reason. You know, maybe they um, are of a faith that it doesn't allow it, or they just uh, don't. Uh, it's just not something that they can wrap their brains around or accept or what have you. And uh, you know, when I share that story, it's how do you uh, say that that you know was first off it can't be the work of the devil which i've heard that too uh you know it was a devil in disguise and it's you know anything that brings comfort is definitely not from the devil and um so that's a really good story that uh, you know i i like to share because it's um something that i think a lot of people have a similar experience Right. And uh, many people are afraid to talk about their own after death communication, just as you said in the beginning of the show that they're, you know, you, sometimes you got to be careful um, with who you share it with because they uh, might think you're crazy or you're reaching, you know, grasping for straws. Um, because I think and when even, you lose, what's that? Even religious leaders um, mm. have a really hard time with that. I know the priests in my church had had no idea that the Vatican said, yeah, they can visit us. And I had to take over to them the article because they had no clue that this was allowed by the Vatican. So I was sort of educating them. And even my brother-in-law, my husband's brother, who's a priest, um, he was afraid of the whole topic because they're not taught that in the seminary. Oh, and wow. we, we used to discuss it, how his parents were visiting me and uh, I used to like cry because of oh. his, but he was trying to protect me. Sure. And I understood, sure. I understood where he was coming from. And I said, we have to agree to, do, to disagree. But after he died, after he died, I got to talk to my brother-in-law, the priest, Bruce Sonny Wells. And um, he said that he apologized for not believing me 
He said, I should have really investigated what you were telling me. And he went on for an hour and a half walking through Sonny Wells, telling me what he was doing in heaven. And it was the most wonderful conversation. And, but I felt so vindicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I went to click. I apologize, Chris. I went to click on a comment by Jeff Baldwin, and uh, it what it did when it popped up on the screen, it, it blocked your face. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so sorry, Jeff. Um, but let me let me read what he said. Uh, he said, "Hi, ladies. When my son passed in 2011, I started receiving signs from him with numbers and letters he wrote on my car windshield and TV screens." Uh, Jeff goes on to say, I lost my uh, car terrier, his dog, back in, on December 23rd, and he's gotten many signs from her already, which is really comforting. So that's very cool. Thanks, Jeff, for sharing that. Jeff's dog is lucky, correct? Because he's part of my prayer group. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to scroll up here. And Mary Lee. Claflin says that Sunny Wells is an excellent medium. Oh, so, and that and nice medium for those who are afraid uh, of who you're going to use. So you can feel very comfortable with her. What's that? I said you can feel very comfortable with her if you are yeah. Christian or any any faith, but Christian any faith, yeah, even those of non faith, yeah, she's lovely, lovely lady. So I want to share something from Darlene. Uh, she says, "I don't get any feelings of my son around me, but my surviving sons do." And I think that's really thank you for Darlene for for posting that comics. I think a lot of people uh, share that. I know my husband. Um, for years didn't get any signs or dreams of our daughter and while I did and I, I Chris I, I want to hear what you think but my initial thought was that um, he was so uh, grieving so deeply that I, she wasn't able to get through absolutely and, and yeah also, does he have a tendency to remember his dreams that's that's another important factor. Hmm. That's because a good point. Yeah. But never remembers his dreams. And yet I know that his parents have visited him many times in his dreams. Okay. They, told they told me that. So right. Just right. Remember, you know, so it could be your hot, but there's yeah, either you don't remember your dreams or you're grieving so hard that, uh, that they can't get through and, and you're not noticing things around you either. I, I've talked to many parents that it was months later that they started to realize oh, I've been getting signs all along, but I was so into mm. myself and my pain and yeah. I just wasn't looking outside of me. And of course that's, that's normal. And then once they started to realize they were getting signs, it just made all the difference in the world, but they had to reach that point where they could look outside of, you know, uh, of right. just internalizing everything in the pain before they right. could do that. Yeah. Right. You know, one of the, um, I work in, all fields of grief and uh, you know my daughter died in an accident uh, but since then I uh, you know it opened my life path to be a professional in all the areas and one of um, those areas is suicide and the parents of suicide in particular you know suicide children who die by suicide uh, what what are your thoughts on that in terms of after death communication for those parents? What words of comfort can you offer them, Chris? As soon as you get an afterlife sign in any form, comforting one, you know your loved one is at peace. With you. You no longer have to worry. So I would say, you know, if you're worried about their soul in any respect, because sometimes those who commit suicide who don't have a brain chemical imbalance, uh, when they go before God, they may be a little ashamed that they, they took their life instead of instead of maybe seeking out the help that, that was available to them. And, uh, and then they see the pain that they've caused, they left behind. So when they're, if they're in that stage, they kind of, um, have to forgive themselves and, and and so pray for them that they can forgive themselves and just you know and, and know that god forgiveness is there waiting for them and as soon as they can forgive themselves they're back with god because god forgiveness is open all the time it's never closed off to us at any time right and get a sign you know that they're now back at peace 
with God and they're happy and that they, they now have the supernatural powers to co to connect with you. So the so best that's thing that's you can do for them until you get a sign is to pray for them to be able to forgive themselves and to you know, just go to God. He loves you, you know, don't don't be afraid. And, and that's what I tell them. Good. Thank you. Thank you for that. And, you know, I think it's I think we should do a show, a grief diaries live on religion. Uh, at some point and invite different um, guest speakers on in relation to grieving and religion, um, because, uh, you know, that's such a profound part of our life is our belief system. And it can be called into question when you face a devastating loss. And I think that'd be really good. I'm going to put that on my on, on my notes to to create that. And we'll, we'll uh, so we can talk about that. Um, I want to share that uh, Darlene uh, typed in another comment. I see lots of comments coming in and I really appreciate that everyone. Um, that's great, keep them coming. Uh, but Darlene said that um, you have to know my son was a healer. He saved many lives, but mm. he suffered. Mm. And I, uh, you know, um, that's, you know, bless him for uh, being, you know. The one that committed suicide? Her, I don't her. know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure here. Um, okay. So she said that now we are healing. So many good things are happening, but he is not here. And I wish he was here to see the healing. And I bet you have a lot to say about that, Chris. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Our loved ones uh, are still a huge part of our lives. They get to see and hear everything that has to do with us and they're lovingly, lovingly guiding us and watching over us. Many times they really are on your angel team along with God's created angels that are part of your angel team. So you, you, you know, you haven't lost your son. You just talk to him and uh, he loves to hear from you. And anytime you think about him, the thoughts go right to him. So just include him in everything. And um, you know, he may be designated as the healer to help you if you have a healing gift, for instance, uh, whether it's in words or touch healing or whatever way you're supposed to heal other people, you may have a gift that God has given you and he could be on your angel team guiding you uh, the right way to do it and but it's always through God um, healing is never by itself it's always through God's Holy Spirit it's not like just an instantaneous thing that just you know no one has any gifts uh, unless they're from God so that's why you always have to acknowledge God and thank him for any gift that you that you have to help other people nicely said nicely said so I have two questions for you one is what's the most common after death sign people get and what's the strangest one you've ever heard i think the most common is probably the dream visits uh, most mm -hmm. people will talk about that more so than anything there after that is sort of scattered all over the place i but i had i heard one really unusual one just recently with one of our members from my uh, facebook group um, he was waiting 12 years to have a, um, a, a, a big sign from his wife. And this is Terrence, probably people read it on, on my Facebook page, and his wife, Gina. And um, Terrence went through a lot of anger in his life. And um, once he learned to forgive and let go, he became a very happy person and things seemed to like be very good for him in his life and it stopped poisoning his own system mm. um, emotionally and physically so anyway just he said he, he waited 12 years and finally the other day he was he had uh, Gina's um, ashes and she, I think he was pouring them into to maybe another container I, I, I forget the exact but anyway, out of nowhere appears her earrings in the midst of the ashes that he received. Oh from. my gosh. <laughs> wow. It, it was the biggest thing that could have ever happened to him. He waited 12 years for something, a wow. sign of, you know, a burning bush kind of a sign. <laughs> like, I can't deny that. 
I think finding the earring in her ashes would qualify as. I think so. I would think wow. So. Isn't that amazing? So that's that's amazing. I, I think how one time uh, a few years back I was moving some boxes and they were empty or so I thought one of them had something inside that was rattling. And so I put it down and opened it up and inside was one of Allie's bracelets. Oh, so, really? yeah. And Definitely can move things, Linda. I've, I, my dad has moved things for me. Uh, I think you're kind of showing off what he could do. Uh, I remember I had this heart that said um, mom on it that my husband had given to me for one Mother's Day. And uh, it was a, a pendant, a gold pendant on a gold chain. And every night I put it on the bureau before I went to bed so I would not lose it. And every morning, you know, I put it on. And one morning I got up and it was gone. And I said, did you take the pendant? Did you take the necklace? And he said, no, did you lose it? And I said, no, I, I put it here last night. So I... I uh, I'm on the floor looking for it. I don't see anything. And finally, uh, I walk out of the room, look around, I come back, and I get down on the floor again, and I see the uh, the heart pendant. And oh, I'm sorry, the chain was on the floor, and it wasn't there just a minute ago. I picked it up, I look in the bureau, and then the heart pendant is there on the bureau, and it wasn't there. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Because I was oh, Wow. That's, it's amazing. It's amazing how they can do that. Uh, yeah. Tiffany McCord brings up a really good point. She says, we need to keep in mind there is no time in heaven. And it is hard for us when we go for a long time without a sign. And I think that's a, a really valid point. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, because, you know, the time uh, in it is not the same. So what do you think about that, Chris? Well, that's really true. And I think a lot of signs um, fast and furious in the beginning when you're grieving the most mm -hmm. and it helps you to um, to feel some joy again and to maybe reinvest in life again and then maybe it'll, they'll start to, to space it out but a lot of people get signs and they're not really sure or or they're not they think they're not getting signs but they're not aware of what the signs are because, and they are subtle so it's easy to overlook it so I always say there's a for me, there's a two-step uh, process to, that really helps people. First, you go to God and ask if your loved one can give you a sign because it comes from God. They can't do anything without God's permission. And then state something specific to your loved one that you would recognize as a sign from them. For instance, a butterfly, uh, a particular um, color flower. And, and then just you know ask for that every night before you go to bed. And then when you get what you asked for, you can say, ah, I can claim that. That's what I asked for. And that's that's the sign that they're around me. So, sometimes, you know, many times our loved ones will, will pick their own. But if you're not sure, that's when you ask for something specific. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah, that, I think that's helpful because there, again, I think there are, you know, quite a few people who have that nagging doubt. Uh, is that really a sign? And so... You know, if you ask for something specific, uh, was it was it John Edward who, when his mom died, uh, he had told her before she passed, uh, was it a white bird, or? He didn't uh, say this, but what he asked for, he got. Mm -hmm. He did, so, but it took eight years. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and uh, but I remember that it was something before she died. He told her, "You need to let me know you're safe on the other side." And I want you to send me, I, I think it was a white bird. And uh, and he was so angry that he didn't get one for so long. And I think that's really interesting, um, you know, because, you know, I, I got signs from Allie pretty quickly, uh, as did the rest of my family. Um, you know, and so then there's others who don't get a sign or they did, but they missed it. You know, they, they chalked it up to coincidence or that, you know, that can't be or or what have you so i'm going to look at a couple more comments here um, uh, just, just in line with that though very quickly many people overanalyze it like three ways to whatever trying to like debunk that it might not be and i say mm -hmm. geez if you're going to this is a gift to you if you're going mm -hmm. to are, are on the side of claiming it claiming oh, your gift sure. 
I think that's hard for many people, though, especially if they have a history of not believing or their faith doesn't permit it. Uh, I think that, um, you know, that's why many people don't share it. Uh, But but if you claim it and say thank you, they will repeat that particular sign because they'll know that you got it and they want you to to get it. Sure. That's why it's important to claim it. Mm-hmm. Sure. Well, that brings up another question that Jeannie uh, Kovitz Donahue says, do you find that people get more signs once their grieving has lessened a little? I think people notice their signs once okay. their grieving has le- lessened. That's what I have been. That's my experience in talking to others, especially parents, that once they're not great, the first few months it is really bad. And then, you know, it could be years, but yeah. they start yeah. to notice in getting signs all along, but just could not claim it, couldn't notice it because of their grief. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I think it's really important to, to point out that the grief timeline is not one size fits all. Um, you know, just as a, a my own case, as an example, when we lost Ali, I don't remember much from the first two and a half years. Mm-hmm. I was in such a state of shock. I was in the fog on autopilot. And yeah. so, uh, you know, that timeline is so much, it actually, for many of us, it can be a lifelong. And uh, so I think it's really important that, uh, you know, Jeannie brings up a very good point, um, but that timeline can be different for everyone. And so when that grief begins to lessen, uh, that point in your journey is going to be different, um, you know, And and I think what really helps is once you start to get some signs, you understand that they still see and hear you and they're still a part of your life. And once you understand that and embrace that and still talk to them and write them letters, it's not like they're off in a black hole. They're still with you. They're still enjoying the things that you're enjoying. They come to those weddings and anniversaries and and births and birthday parties and first day of school and once you understand that it's just the most comforting it's like having for me it's like having a shawl cover me yeah that my family is still around especially on these big occasions and in my case i'm very blessed because my dad will massage the top of my head when he's around and my mother will pickle right here so when we have a family get together or we're out to dinner i'll feel one of them you know i say oh daddy's here and they'll all oh, daddy. oh that's wonderful i love that i, I love that it I, happens often so this way i know that they're there and they're having yeah. fun watching us having fun yeah. and you know it's them because they, they give you that same sign so exactly. all right so um Okay, so Sheila Ward uh, says, uh, and then I'm going to ask another question from Darlene because it's also a very powerful question. But Sheila says, uh, the one of my children I was grieving the hardest for was the one who didn't come in my dreams. I demanded he come one night, and he did. And he said, I love you, Mom, but it's, but it's hard for me to get here. So what, what is your thought on that? He said, I love you, mom, but it's hard for me to get here. Does it it take a lot of energy? It takes a lot of energy. Uh, It takes a lot of energy for for them to show themselves. It takes takes a lot of energy to come to us. But he could be in in a learning mood. He could be where he's not really free to because it might be a lot for him to learn right now. So it could be not that free to come as someone who may be you know, is taking a little break for, and, and this is why, um, this is why sometimes you feel like you get a lot of signs and other times you don't, and uh, they have jobs in heaven. It's just not that they're floating around on a cloud, you know, playing a harp, which is what I used to think. <laughs> it's nice to think that though. <laughs> so, so they have, they have important missions that they go, they, that they uh, go on for God. And sometimes they elect not to contact us until that mission is over. It's not, they're still following us. They still can see and hear us, but they kind of want to concentrate instead of contacting us on that mission they're working on. Yeah. Well, and I think also, um, you know, they, they don't want to interrupt our growth. Uh, you know, I, I think that there might be some tendency to want to just live from contact to contact, you know, from sign to sign. And, uh, absolutely. And, yeah. and when the 
starts to happen, they will pull back because they want you to reinvest in life again. You still have a purpose for being here and, and there's meaning to your life and, and you need to learn the things that you um, agree with God that you want to learn when you came down here. So you have your own missions and um, and they don't want to be a distraction. Right, so, right. So that's why, and that's why they always need God's permission because God knows the timing, what what is best for you. Right, right. I think that's, that's really good information. So Darlene, posed a really powerful um, question that I think a lot of people wonder and ask. And she says, do you believe in hell? I do. Absolutely. Do you believe our loved ones ever go to hell? And I think that's a really, um, before you answer that, um, you know, I, I, I want to say that one time many years ago, uh, I was a, a firefighter EMT and one of our own lost his son. And I, we all went to the funeral in our blues. And I, I remember hearing the minister say that the son was being held in purgatory. And I remember thinking, oh, my gosh, but he's just an innocent teenager. Uh, you know, he, he died in a ski accident. And um, that was really, uh, I mean, something, I mean, that was many years ago, and I, I've never forgotten it. So uh, what is your thought about hell? And what is your thought about loved ones? Okay. I, I, I've learned a lot from um, my, my really good friend, Sonny Wells, who is a Christian medium. And we would have many chats with the angels about these types of topics in fact we had a radio show called ask the angels mm -hmm. and all the podcasts are available with the topic so but um and you know i think we've we've touched upon this but the angels say there is a place called the other waiting place and i guess in a catholic religion you would consider it maybe purgatory and um but hell technically does not exist until after the final judgment so okay. there's different levels of the other waiting place in fact one night i was actually uh in in my dream state i was taken to the other waiting place so i would know what it was like and uh, i think i was on a more of a, a, a upper end uh not so deep <laughs> where it's like <laughs> it can get bad <laughs> and um well. And, uh, and I saw someone in there and um, who was in a fetal position and it, I felt like electricity was hitting my body and I asked for Jesus to get us out of there. And as soon as I said that, I was out of there and I was back and I woke up. So uh, I asked the angels about this, like, who is that person? And they said, um, they said it was someone who was part of my soul group family and his name was Martin. And um, he, you know, he was there because he, they told me, but I'm not going to share that right now. And um, I said, can I pray for Martin's soul? And he, they said, yes. So I started to pray for Martin's soul and I asked other people to pray for Martin. And in two weeks, I, I didn't feel a need to pray for Martin anymore. So oh, wow. I'm talking to Sonny and we were talking to the angels again. And I said, um, is, is Martin out of there? And they said, yes. And he's in he's back in heaven now, and he's going to come and thank you for praying for him. Chris, so that's said, amazing. Mm, it was wonderful. And uh, so I went and, after I hung up the phone. I walked into the bathroom, and I heard a voice say, "Thank you, Christine." Oh my God! And then one time, a while later, I had a dream one night where I was taken to heaven, and I was being led around uh, to and all these people were there and there was like beautiful gems and uh and the person taking me around i said are you martin and he said yes <laughs> it was a surprise that i knew who he was and, and then and then i heard um i heard jesus voice and he was talking in aramaic and i didn't understand what he was saying and, but I, it was a very author, authoritative voice, but I didn't know what he was saying. And, um, and then, um, you know, everyone was listening when he was talking and I really, I kind of forget how it ended up, but I ended up back and, um, the angels would not tell me what Jesus said. Cause I said, well, what did he say? What did he say? But they, they wouldn't tell me what, what the Aram Aramaic was, was, but yeah. So I had Martin 
you know, as uh, he was on my angel team for a little while there. Wow. That is such a cool story. I, so, I want to share. Go ahead. So it does help to pray for those souls. But really, no one really knows if that person is in purgatory or not. So no religious leader can tell you where that person is. And so if you are getting signs for them, you know that they're fine because they only have the power to do that if they're with God. Okay. Okay. I want to share, before we go, I want to share that Catherine Romano says, I lost my husband seven months ago and miss him terribly. We were true soulmates. So Catherine, I just want to give you um, a virtual hug and let you know that you know, having a soulmate is such a, a, an incredible blessing and your husband's love is always with you and he's always with you. And I know it's hard to believe right now, but hang on to the idea that hope can be restored because it can. OK, so, Chris, thanks so much for being here tonight um, with us on Diaries Live. And, and, for, what's and that? Uh, I hope it helped your listeners and anyone who's grieving that your loved ones are still a huge part of your lives. Please, like, keep talking to them. And they'd love that from you if you do and be happy for them. And in no time, you know, you're going to be with them. So it's just a temporary separation. Just think of them as on vacation and you're. Before you know it, you'll be joining them on vacation, a permanent vacation. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris, how can people contact you? Uh, they can go to my website at christinedominiac.com. Okay. Uh, okay. And uh, then everything you need there are my books, uh, how to get into my my Facebook group called After okay. Death and Prayer Wave. So, yeah. And so what is your Facebook group? It's called After Death Communication and Prayer Wave. Okay. And it's a place where people can come. It's a private group. You can discuss any signs that you had or ask us to pray for you. We pray every Friday also for uh, as a routine for people to get afterlife signs from their loved ones. But it's a place of uh, grief support and prayers and love. And you can share your most intimate um, experiences that you can't share with other people who might laugh at you or, or, or act like you're crazy. We're there for you. So, you know, just join our loving group. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a place where, um, you know, Chris and others hold that sacred space for people in need. So bless you for doing that, Chris. So thanks so much for being with us tonight. Uh, join us next Monday night, uh, same time right here on Grief Diaries Live, and we'll keep the conversation going. All right, everyone, have a great night. Bye. Bye, Chris. Bye, Linda.